am a Legends girl trying to make in this discounting world. This is OG Star Wars coming to you with another bit of lore pertaining to Yoda and this new baby Yoda species. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Um, yeah, so let's get at this. So first of all, um, the biggest hype about Mandalorian is the baby Yoda species. And doing my research, it is baby Yoda species. Um, it's even put on um, Yoda's canon or Disney canon or discounted page. Um, it has Yoda, Yaddle, and Baby. And um, so what I've noticed is that Disney Lucasfilm is great at milking the friggin nostalgia. And they got us women right in the friggin heartstrings with this baby Yoda species. And we are so blind to this big, gushy, nostalgia feeling, womanly hormones that we are having for this baby Yoda species that we're forgetting that this may pairing up some of the canon, even with theirs, even with their canon. And um, so let's break this down. Okay, so Yoda was born in eight, um, 896 BBY. So BBY again is Battle Before Yavin. So that's the um, time signature that we use in Star Wars. And he never knew he was force sensitive and just a little tiny bit of history. He was leaving with his human friend during, um, when he was a young Yoda species <laughs> and um, our young being. And he was going to the core worlds to find employment, like work. And they had a rundown spaceship that was hit by an asteroid as they were making their way. And they sent out a stress to signal and they were their life support rations, everything was depleting. And they were found by um, Jedi Master Nakata Del Gormo and they were rescued by Jedi Master and declared both Yoda and the human to be for very strong in the force. And so that's how Yoda began his um, his trek in the Jedi Order, becoming the Grand Master of the Jedi Order when we see him in the original trilogy. So now looking at Yoda a little bit more, when he passed away in Return of the Jedi, he was 800, 900 years old, and or near 900 years old. And so he had lived a fulfilling life. So he seen many wars, he seen peacetime, he trained many, many, many Jedi, whether personally or um, practicing with them when we see him in um, the prequel trilogies as an example. And from there, you know, he was able to train the hope of the galaxy, which is our, is in original EU, original George Lucas lore. Now it was, it's completely tore down that friggin' narrative and pisses me off to even talk about it. But when you look at Luke Skywalker in did the Disney canon, see I'm kind of starting cause I'm, ugh, it's, it's, it pisses me off. Um, yeah, so seeing him in that, he isn't the hope. It's not him anymore, it's Ray. And uh, we will not, we're not talking about this scenario here, but yes, just chew on those words a little bit, you know? Mm. All right, so we have now this baby Yoda species. And, you know, I laugh at the little gremlin reference that he looks like a, you know, those um, hairless cats. <laughs> he looks like a hairless gremlin. Okay, I'm sorry. So if gremlins were green underneath, that's probably what they would look like. And yeah, so just <laughs> giggle on that one a little bit, you know, and I say that with loving sarcastic. Well, maybe not loving, but yeah, very sarcastic and maybe spiteful. I don't know. You, you make what it is out of that. So he looks like a baby gremlin, like a gremlin without hair. And he's got those big, huge um, bobble eyes, very, very sweet looking. You know, again, it put it pulls on the heartstrings of us women, 
you know, um, because that's just how we are made genetically. And so I think this was a huge plan to get everybody excited about Mandalorian get us pulled in, get us by the heartstrings so that maybe we won't pay attention to how bad episode nine is. Who knows? Is this going to save the franchise of current? No, it's not. Why? Because I see this baby Yoda um, doing damage to their canon. Now, should um, I be upset with it? No, because they've already proven that they can't build a coherent continuity in their new lore. They trash, they said, well, they didn't trash it, but they said, okay, new or original EU, now legends. And coming forth, we want a clean slate. We want to make our own lore. We want creative freedom. How? They haven't used much creative freedom because they're pulling from the EU. Um, so now one thing that's disheartening is the fact that George Lucas himself prohibited writers from exploring and expounding on Yoda's um, species, where they come from. He basically wanted them to be, or yeah, the Yoda species to be a mystery. So we never really got where exactly where Yoda came from, our Yaddle, and we never really got the name of the species. We just know him as Yoda. And to me, I think that's perfect. We always want some kind of mystery in some in, in a lore in a franchise. And I, to me, I that's okay. I never got pissed. I never got upset that Yoda is a mystery because he is the main like sage of Star Wars for a long period of time. So now, when we look at the baby Yoda species. They say he's 50 years old on um, when he's found. Now, looking at, in general, with species, no matter how long their species live or not, the age of a baby needs to progress. Why? Because for the longevity of the species, the animals, whatever, you, uh, a species should not have a, such a long time period to progress out of being a baby and into a toddler and even in toddler stage. That should progress rather quickly because they are at their most vulnerable. So that's where I kind of find a displacement with that, a 50 year old baby. I understand that they're trying to show that this is very different than any other species in the galaxy because they live to be maybe a thousand years at tops. We don't know. Again, we have no idea. But for the survival of the species, the species babies have to progress rather quickly because they are vulnerable. So that's where I see that. On a woman's standpoint, that's where I see that at. And um, maybe it makes sense to you, maybe not comment below in the comments what you think about that if you disagree that's fine and um so that's where i find that really off-putting and another thing too is that oh well he's strong in the force so he must have training he's 50 years old are she and my thing is you have your progressions even in baby stages newborns infants you know, then you go into toddler. And I just can't see training going on until this baby starts walking and talking. And so that right there, I don't buy. I don't buy that um, because this is a baby Yoda species that it has to be strong in the force and it's gonna lift this big old rhinosaurus that looks like a cross between a mammoth and a rhino. Um, I don't buy it. So another thing too is that if this little baby Yoda species was training, where the hell was this baby species in the time frame of the movies? in the time frame of all this when you, um, Luke and even Leia were the hopes of the galaxy and that after like before and during that time frame of the classical era 
and into the return or after the return of the Jedi, we did have um, young um, Jedi who were in hiding come out and join Luke's um, new Jedi order. So where the hell was this baby species? And if this baby species was alive when Yoda was alive, why didn't Yoda take notice? Why wasn't that Yoda baby species a priority to him? Since, you know, we don't really know nothing about the Yoda species. And that's I got that's the only way I can describe it. So those are some words to think or some things to think about right there. Also to um it's just, it just feels very out of place. And the only thing that is making this thrive is basically the heartstrings. And so I'm gonna leave that at that. So you guys have a great day. May the force be with you and I shall talk to you later. Thank you.